Hello everyone, it's California Bird here with something a little bit different. We are going to be checking my mail. So what came in today? Well, it is a letter from Robert Space Industries, the makers of Star Citizen, which is currently the most crowdfunded video game ever produced. It is pretty ridiculous. They have already brought in over $140 million and it just keeps growing. At this point, it's not just a game they're making. It's not just a studio house anymore. It is a movement. And what did come in was this beautiful Polaris brochure for the 2946 Polaris. It is a sub-capital kind of Corvette size ship that you could purchase to help fund the game. And this is a pretty nice brochure actually. Got the nice big Robert Space Industry logo right on the back. Just so you know who is really the ones behind this. It's quite nice though. It's very much like a car brochure that you would have. I mean, it's got here this very nice thick cardstock but yet glossy paper and then on the inside we have some also very very glossy very very nice almost smells like a car brochure as well car brochure but it's a spaceship brochure so it's like a million times better um so this is really cool that they released this and it's also cool that i got this on the day that 2.6 launched which is the new edition of star citizen uh, alpha 2.6 where they have a lot of new features that are showing up so it's pretty cool now I'm kind of going to go through this brochure and kind of give some commentary as I read through it. Uh, but if you want to follow along, there will be a link to a digital version that will probably be a little bit higher quality than this video uh, down below if you want to follow along. Uh, so let's, let's go in and see what's in this brochure. I mean, first off, this cover is really amazing. Uh, I love the shots on it. And if we open this up, we have a nice, beautiful welcome aboard message from the captain of the UEES Polaris, Captain Lucia Franco. I will not be uh, reading that, but you can definitely pause here if you want to read this. Uh, moving on is a nice, beautiful top-down shot of the Polaris sitting in some kind of a birthing hangar. I love these little trucks, these little fuel trucks they have. They're kind of like Hemets. I know how familiar you are with like US military trucks, but it looks very much like a US military fuel tanker. I really do wonder if they're going to sell these in game. If so, this would totally be worth it. AKA you should put this on Voyager direct and we should have these as well as buggies. That would be really cool. Um, but you can see the nice shots of the hangar and the ship in general. Moving on, you can see inside the actual hangar in there is a light fighter, the Gladius. Hangar is pretty large actually. It's like two decks tall and there's tons of room in there. I don't know why you couldn't fit a bigger ship in there. Honestly, wink, wink, nudge, nudge. I think we really could. I think, honestly, I'm hoping that as long as it fits in there, we can put it in that hangar because that would be freaking sweet. It's like a pocket carrier, but with only one ship. But, I mean, you could probably fit some other ships. If you put in some Merlins or some really tiny snub fighters, you could fill that with tons and tons of ships. And you could just be the Mosquito Launcher, basically. Moving on, we see that there is flawless design and endless versatility. Beautiful shot of the torpedo bays. They are huge. I mean, look at the guy sitting on, up there and the upper deck on that half deck. He is like the height of the diameter of the torpedo. These are huge torpedoes. This is really where the teeth of the ship are, is going to be. Uh, and this is just going to wreck capital ships. I hope that it's going to wreck capital ships. I hope it's going to be one of those fast attack, get in, drop your torpedoes, get out type of ships. Kind of looks that way and I like it. Do think the corridors are a little large. When I think of a torpedoes and I think of a submarine, I would think that the corridors would be a lit, little bit more, uh, how do we say this, engineered with not necessarily beauty, but more for um, compactness and basically fitting everything in a nice tight spot. Basically being a bit more engineered, I would think. But I mean, big corridors are okay. Moving on, we see Ready to Fight and Today and The Next. Uh, so... This is the bridge. Looks pretty big. Again, I would have thought it would have been a lot, uh, about a lot more closely packed. Uh, when you think about military ships and you more military aircraft or whatnot, they're always every inch is usable space. And here, it's very artistified. Uh, it's just everything kind of is out there. Um, lots of open space. I don't necessarily get the military feel from the ship personally, but it does look like a pretty ship. And of course, we have to have our like 200 inch TV up there just because, you know, reasons. Moving on, we see the three view of the ship. Definitely looks like an arrowhead. And then, of course, we can see a nice uh, shot of it in battle, uh, fighting against what looks like maybe it is a Vanduul Kingship or some other Vanduul capital ship. 
I'm not exactly sure on the Vandal ships. However, it looks quite nice shooting all its guns like that right through the debris. On its starboard side, there is a constellation which has just gotten absolutely wrecked. Uh, so obviously the Polaris is going to be good because it won't get wrecked. I mean, that's what they're trying to tell you. Of course, this is a brochure, so, you know. Again, nice top view shot of it isolated and a nice bottom shot as well, highlighting some features. Uh, coming up now is the map. Super useful if you're going to be boarding this ship and trying to take it over. Uh, so you can see everything from where the torpedo and missile launchers are to where the cargo bay, hangar, engineering, crew quarters, mess, all the important things of a ship, you can see it on there. And that's pretty cool. Good map, good map to study if you're going to steal one of these. We also have a nice shot now of, again, wide corridors. Again, they say it, it allows optimal movement for crew and goods. I can understand goods if these are like corridors, like main arteries for moving large equipment. That makes sense. But if every corridor on the ship is this large, I think that's a little bit ridiculous. Uh, but it is pretty interesting. They are probably going to design this with FPS in mind, which will be super cool. And I cannot wait to get my hands on 2.6 to play some FPS stuff. Moving on, we see a nice shot of the mess hall. I very much enjoy that they have a pool table. It is always important to have a pool table, foosball table, ping pong table, or some sort of tabletop game. As someone who lives in Silicon Valley, trust me, that is a number one. That's the number one. Like that is that comes before food and water and sleep. Like you need to have that. That it's good they have that. Um, we also have some nice benches for the crew to sit on and. Looks like you can seat about 12 people on here, so that's a lot of people for a meal. And of course, you'd rotate throughout the day. Moving on is some schematics of the pool table and of the uh, nice sitting areas and whatnot, other kind of kitchen stuff. And then moving forward is a beautiful art rendering. Really love this one. It's the Polaris being launched out of some sort of space dock or whatnot, and then it's launching itself a Gladius, very much a ship launching a ship launching well station launching a ship launching a ship i don't know how uh how you know like logistically that is beneficial but i mean you know yellow or maybe the gladius is just leaving before the polaris docks i don't know but it is definitely a beautiful rendering i absolutely love it i love how they have all these little gladiuses in this image kind of add some life to the universe right there up next is this nice beautiful ship chart. Uh, we can see the Bengal Carrier, the mother of all UEE ships, Javelin, and the Idris Frigate, which actually was going to be the size of the Polaris. However, as we all probably know, the Idris got scaled up because, well, you can't fit three fighters on a Polaris, on a ship that's 199 meters long. And so they had to up it, and so there we go, have the Polaris. Right there in the middle. And I actually just noticed there is kind of a typo in here because they're they're not very following SI standards. Lowercase m is meters, people. Uppercase m, I don't really even know what that is. That might be something off the wall. I, I can't think of it right now. But all these ships over here have big M's and over here have little M's. The big ships have little M's and the little ships have big M's. Maybe they're trying to tell us something. Maybe this is subliminal messaging. Who knows? But anyway, nice lineup of the RSI ships we have also here a little blurb about the namesake of the ship commander hester polaris who apparently was a awesome person at asymmetric warfare you can go ahead and read that yourself if you want moving forward we see kind of very similar shots again top view showing where we have a lot of the stuff we also talk about how much crew we need 13 to 24 people uh, which in game you can use npcs as well as your friends if you want to do that and some other just stats and whatnot. Moving forward, we see a very similar shot of the but however, of the bottom. And we also see the size of these torpedoes. They are absolutely massive. So that is definitely going to shrekle any capital ship that you come across. Uh, moving forward, just some more kind of overview, kind of engineering style documents. Well, in the style to look like they're engineering, but not necessarily engineering style. Anyway, I won't pull hairs on that. However, we do see a nice shot of the hangar and how large it is. That Gladius, you could easily probably fit another Gladius in there, which means you could fit so many Merlins. I feel like when I get my Polaris, I'm just going to fill this thing with Merlins, and we're just going to have, like, mosquito warfare. And just, like, Merlins will blot out the sun. That That's, that's going to be the goal of my Polaris, if we can get that many Merlins in there. Uh, moving forward, we have some shots of landing gear and where they're kind of placed and some thruster shots 
and to close it up for those kind of documents we have a shot of the torpedo bays and kind of showing kind of a cutaway pretty nice uh showing just everything that is in the torpedoes these are huge size 10 torpedoes so pretty nice and then the final shot we have of the ship is the beautiful polaris launching out a saber so it can definitely launch something larger than a gladius because we see it right there beautiful shot and to finish it all up, of course, there's merchandise. You can always buy merchandise if you're going to buy a fancy car. We have a nice t-shirt, models, and playing cards. Now, I haven't seen any of these in real life. I'm assuming we can probably purchase these in-game when the game drops for our character. But it would be pretty cool and pretty sweet to see these in the RSI store. Uh, unless I've completely missed them. In which case, you should leave a comment down below. But either way, that has been kind of a go-through of the Polaris brochure from Robert Space Industries. It's pretty cool. I'm super hyped for 2.6 and super hyped for all the rest that is going to come to Star Citizen. So if you want to see more Star Citizen videos, definitely remember to put a big thumbs up down below. And if you enjoyed this and want to see more content, remember to subscribe to The Gaming Birds. As always, it has been California Bird. See ya.